Hello everyone. So I need to get out in the front yard this morning and pull some pokeweed. I've been procrastinating and it's gone crazy. So now it's going to be quite the chore, but I thought let's get started with But I thought let's get started with a garden tour. <sighs> get me motivated. So, I have we're actually going to start in a different spot today. We're going to start up on my deck. So some things I'm going to show you is first I have propagated some of the white strawberry plants into this pot. So I'm going to try to get those to take because I have to say the little white strawberries with the red seeds are quite tasty. They're very sweet. So I want more of them. I don't have a lot. And then we also brought out since it's a lot warmer my daughter has this pomegranate tree that she's been keeping in her room for the past three years it's never been outside so it's outside now it's been in a really sunny window in her room it looks like it's kind of struggling lately because it's so big so we brought it out here to see if it would do better but it's got a pomegranate on it it's had a few but hopefully it'll do better now that it's outside a blueberry bush here it's got blueberries on it I'm so excited this is the first year I've had I have like six or seven blueberry plants but they've all been really small and I've not gotten any blueberries yet so this year's the first year I'm gonna have blueberries so I'm pretty excited about that and then here is one of my mint plants I can't even I don't even know this one is spearmint so my favorite mint so it's almost time to propagate this one make some more mint plants and then there are the lettuces again they're doing pretty good some of them have gone to seed because we had a few 90 degree days this past week the top two were doing really well been doing cut and come again with those and then down on the lower deck here, I have a few things I wanted to show you that are super exciting. So if you've been with me since my first couple videos, when I started planting seeds, you know that I've had quite the issue with ground cherries. But looky here, I, am, I have done it. They are looking good. And they have some of the little husks on there so I don't know if you're a good guy so I'm gonna take you off of there probably not because there's some little chewed up eaten holes For the most part they're looking pretty good so this will, I'm so excited and from what I hear is once you have ground cherries they're everywhere which is fine by me if they volunteer themselves next year that'll be great and i believe these are two different varieties i think one of them is lowen's family heirloom and then the other is pineapple and then look at these lovely lettuces i need to cut cut these and eat these um actually i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to let these go to seed because i planted like a single variety this is a red butterhead and I want to save the seeds from them some of them didn't take so like this one white Boston and Lola Biondo I actually didn't get any germination but like this one here I've got a single one and it's ruby red leaf I'm probably just gonna let these go to seed and then over here is where I planted some of the stuff that I got from the nursery that I went to this is lavage and then this is orange balm. So it's like lemon balm, but it's orange balm. And it does, it smells like oranges. It's lovely. And then I have a couple of pots that I haven't planted yet. Some volunteer lettuce from, I guess, seeds that maybe fell down from there. And I've got a few pots over there that I need to amend the soil and plant something in and I need to get to it. But you know, everything in time. And then also on the other end of this bed. So this is a bed that I just built off 
of my deck. I thought one year I had a bunch of sunflowers planted here and they just were all lovely. This right here is a movie screen that we put on the back side of our house so that when we're in the pool or we're sitting here in the evening, we can, and I know it looks dirty, but once you, it gets dark and you put the movie on there, you can't see any of the dirt. So I had this one year just full of sunflowers. It was amazing, beautiful. Over on this other side, I planted the purple sage salvia. I mean, gosh, I don't know if the camera does this justice, but these two are absolutely beautiful. And this one is tricolored sage. But I, I didn't know where to plant these. Some of the stuff just needed to be out of the pots, so I just stuck it where I could. And if I need to move it, once it's established, I'll move it. If I decide to do that. All right, so. Lots to show you. Hopefully I can get to some of it. There's the greenhouse. Let's turn the heat pump onto the pool. We want to do some night swimming tonight. And I like it to be like 90 degrees. <laughs> I'm a big baby when it comes to cold water. All right, greenhouse. Everything's doing good. I have a pepper plant that I need to plant. So I'm just, this is the lemon drop hot pepper plant. And these are jalapenos. This is a 42 day tomato. And it's got some flowers on it. And then this one is the Wera Kauai tomato. And then my peas are still producing, surprisingly. I can't believe. I need to get some shade cloth on this, which I think I'm going to do today. Some of them aren't doing too hot, but some of them are still doing fine. I've got carrots. And one thing I wanted to say, I planted these carrot seeds at the beginning of December of last year. And I planted them late and they didn't really do anything. Didn't really do anything. And then once spring hit, wouldn't you know, they germinated. It's just like, same thing for, for those plants right there, the cabbage plants. Now I don't think I'm gonna get anything, but you can still eat the leaves. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. And then I have a patch of lettuce. All of these seeds, besides the tomatoes and the peppers and the peas, I planted in December of last year. And you know, when seeds are ready to germinate, they'll germinate. Now I might get some carrots. Let's see here. Yep, so they're trying to form their root. Give this to the chickens. And I've got all my mints right here. Sorry about the lighting, the sun is out. Planted some more tomatoes. This is a super sweet 100. Planted some in pots. I planted some onions, red and walla walla onions in this pot to see how they do. That's an experiment. Tess's land race current, Barry's crazy cherry, empty one need to plant. This one is another 42 day. Ooh, look at those. Give them a little flick, pollinate, pollinate, yay. And then I've got some peppers in this. And then there's my cabbages, look at those. Let's see, are we getting any heads to anything? I don't know. They're probably gonna go to seed. No, I'm not getting. Oh, well, there's like a teeny tiny one starting right there. These are red cabbages. Teeny tiny. I'm just waiting and seeing. Um, if I start to see any bug damages, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to make um, like collard greens, except with cabbage greens, because you can use the uh, leaves the same way you would like, you know, cook up a ham hock and then add these greens to it. Yummy, yummy, yummy. There's the hot pepper bed. So this has all kinds of hot peppers in it. And then I'm growing some kales, some, oh, let me see if I can shadow it enough. Radishes, let's see, are any of these ready? Uh, there's some over there that are ready. And then I've had tomatoes and there's tomato volunteers popping up everywhere in here. Crowding out my, trying to grow some beets. And then this is a golden Detroit beet, which I don't know if I'm gonna get anything. So 
some more kale. And then there's that carrot bed that we did with the cornstarch. Sorry, it's so bright out here, but they are doing great. And then my strawberry bed, which has been producing like crazy. Down we go. There's the other onion bed that eh, wasn't doing so hot, but I might get a few onions out of there. Oh, come on. Something dug up this. So this is an Italian striped zucchini squash. I don't know if it's going to make it now that it's been bothered. Ah, two of them, you little jerks. I don't know if it's chipmunks or squirrels. I'm going to put something over top of this. Maybe some f fabric until they get a little more established. Some garden fabric. Not garden fabric, but like netting. So that's the Italian striped zucchini. I got a couple more there. Or maybe this is the sun striped squash. But they're popping up. This one, nothing. These are... Again, sun striped squash. I might, how many's here? I might have to get rid of this one because it's planted a little close. And this is the spaghetti squash. I might have to get rid of one of those because they're planted pretty close. This is the Iran squash, doing really well. And then I'm not, I'm guessing these seeds weren't viable because I've this is the second time I've planted these um table gold table gold winter squash still don't have anything so all right and then down in this bed let's see do we have anything popping up yes <sighs> gotta water again Again, I don't know if these seeds are viable, but this was the Long Island cheese squash that I planted. Also planted sweet meat. And this one, early acorn squash. I've got one right there. And then one right here. Then this one here is the Cavalli green zucchini. Again, another Cavalli. Aren't they pretty? They're pretty. So I have a real issue with pests with my zucchini. So I've got to keep up with them this year. So I've got a big old bag of diatomaceous earth. I'm hoping I can maintain them a little better than I have in the past. You know, I want to put my best foot forward for you guys. Oh, and here's the garlic. I'm thinking... It's getting close to, you know, time to harvest this. Because the tops are kind of dying a bit. And then these are some onions that were planted last year. So onions are a biennial. And I'm letting them go to seed. Aren't they pretty? It's, I mean, my husband thinks it's like something magical looking. <laughs> I'm letting them go to seed. <clears throat> and they're Walla Walla onions. And I'm going to save the seeds from those. Okay, look at these tomato plants. They are just in two weeks. I did a garden tour two weeks ago and they're insane. They're just going crazy everywhere. I love it. Got them nice and pruned up. I'm going to try to stay with that. All different kinds, Moon Glow, Trophy, Watermelon Beef Steak, Pink Brandy, Yellow Brandy, Hillbilly. I have, I counted, almost 180, or exactly 180 tomato plants. With probably about 145 different varieties. Should be a very interesting year. There's my hose because I have to water by hand. Another strawberry bed. Doing fantastic. And I forgot to put, I had to put some of this netting on it because chipmunks again. But look, 
Look at those strawberries. Delicious breakfast snack for me. Mmm. Yummy. And then here are my berry bushes. Now, last year was the second year these were in the ground and they were piddly little things. Look at them now. Like, I can't believe how they just exploded. Oh, oh. That asparagus plant touched the back of my neck and just scared me. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. Me and my daughter both love berry yogurt parfaits with some granola for breakfast. Mm. I, I can't wait. I mean, you can see there's berries, berries, berries everywhere. More tomato. This is an entire tomato bed. I think there's like two rows of 16, so 32 tomatoes, give or take, in these two beds here. So we got these trellises put up because I only had one trellis and then I was using stakes, but I don't like using stakes because when the tomato plant gets so heavy the stalk just kind of starts to smush I don't know if I wasn't tying it right or what I just don't like that method so I got a couple more cattle panels and we put those up it's just my preference I got everything tied up so you can see the smaller plants that I planted last week because I don't think I had these in the ground I think the last May garden tour these beds were still a mess from last year but I got them cleaned up I got the soil amended I have a little problem here because I had just put the soil in, but there's like a little crack. I'm gonna fill that in with a bucket of dirt today. And I also put up some of these, I don't know if you see these little tapes flying around everywhere. They're like metallic to kind of scare the birds away from pecking at my tomatoes when they start to ripen. Got them all tied up so as they grow, I'll just take them and twist them around the string here to try to train them that this is the direction I want you to go and then once they're up here I can tie them to the cattle panel. So below that is another bed of about 32 tomatoes and then as you can see here I've got one, two, three rows of tomatoes as well as I planted some carrot seed tape. Now, this is the first time I've ever tried carrot seed tape and there's some carrots. I don't know if they're gonna have enough time to do anything before it gets too hot for them, but we'll see. Hopefully maybe the tomato plants will shade the carrots a little bit and give them a longer season. Some of these, this is the second row down in the middle. This is my cherry tomato bed which there's more cherry tomatoes scattered throughout, but this is just, uh, the whole bed is pretty much cherry tomatoes. I think there's actually a couple of slicers, but there's berry crazy cherry, gobstopper, Isis candy cherry, blue boarberries, bosk blue boarberries, or wait, no, bosk blue bumblebee. Super sweet aperitif, which I am super excited about. It's supposed to have uh, like the sweetest cherry tomato ever what else is here oh, this is a current i believe yeah orange current so they're all looking so great lots of flowers on them excited here's a dr weish's marvel stripe i just want to just you know if i showed you every variety i have these videos would be like four hours long german pink great white richardson more tomatoes, more tomatoes, and then there's a ground cherry I stuck in there. Cherokee purple, pink jazz, pork chop. I had a little mishap right here. My husband has to fix some things for me. <laughs> and then I didn't know what to do with this little bed that I have right here. So I was just like, well, let's just plant some more tomatoes. <laughs> so that's what I did. And we put up, this isn't a cattle panel, but again, it's the same kind of trellis. I'm using those on the bottom here as well. Because again, I was just like, we don't need a lot of beans, like green beans. 
I have enough squash planted. I have enough beans. I'm growing tiny melons and squash on the trellises. So I thought, what, what would I do behind the trellises in the beds? Well, I would plant more tomatoes. So that's what I... <laughs> That's what I did. So there was more tomatoes and then I planted a nasturtium and a summer dream Cosmo. Here I've got a couple of areas with nothing coming up yet. The scallop yellow bush squash. So I might have to replant there. Oh, and also I think I planted beans and then I forgot to label. No bueno. And uh, so then I replanted cause I didn't see anything. And I planted sweet dumpling squash on here. So there's a few of those popping up. Exciting. And on this trellis. So I have two different types. On this side I have the Punakira cucumber. And then on this side I have the uh, Natsu Fushiru. Oh, I butcher everything. Fusharini cucumber. So those are doing well. And then I planted right here see how they do in this corner because I figured this is the Cinderella pumpkin. You can see that one. It's going to be its birthday. Happy birthday. But I figured if they came out, I figured if they came out and just went all over, that'd be fine by me. That'd be kind of cool. I've got two white currant tomatoes here on the end. But Scarlet Louise, all different types. Two of those. White Cherry, Vincent Watts, Black Brandy, White Thomasole, Heirloom Marriage Carbon. Okay, just keep going. Lots of tomatoes. Here's the sweet potato bed. It's doing well. And I got some sweet potato starts from Stark Brothers, which everything I've ever gotten from Stark Brothers has done wonderfully. They do a great job. I've gotten fruit trees. That's where... All of my different variety of raspberries and blackberries come from Stark Brothers. The peach tree that I have from Stark Brothers. These sweet potato plants are from a nursery. And they are they were the ones I planted first and are doing really well. And at the very end over here, I just have a few. So these right here, this around this, this edge are the ones that I started myself from a sweet potato that I got at the store. I started way too early, so most of them died. By the time I was able to get them in the ground, this is what they kind of looked like. But I've got a few that are doing okay. And then I also planted, at the very end, I just put the sweet potato in the ground. As you can see, you can see the sweet potato right there. Just to see, you know, if you just plant the sweet potato in the dirt if it'll grow. So that's an experiment I'm trying. So far, it's looking okay. All right, what is on the edge of this bed besides a dirty glove? This one is a container zucchini. I, I'm not even gonna say that, that's that one. More tomato plants back behind the trellises. Dixie Golden Giant, Granny Cantrells, Harvard Square, Chapman, Caspian Pink, Prudence Purple. On this end, I have, this is called Smooth Criminal Hybrid Squash. I think it's zucchini, yeah. And then I have, on this side, Baby Boo Pumpkin. So it's like a little white pumpkin. I wanted to see how they do in this corner. Again, more tomatoes on the back row here. So we'll just go down the back and then I'll come up through the middle and show you what's in the middle there. Olive Hill. And then this is a volunteer sunflower. So I just let it go. I love sunflowers. So chocolate stripes. What's this one? Carbon. Cherokee or chocolate cherry, black cherry, tropical sunset, another ground cherry. It's gonna be ground cherry rich this year. More tomatoes again. Look at these tomatoes. They are doing so great. 
And I think I just planted these up like three weeks ago. They're doing amazing. Look at these flowers. Some of these flowers are just massive. I mean, look over here. Oh, gonna have some big ones. Look at those. Ooh. Yeah, gonna have some big old monster tomatoes this year. I'm so excited. I mean, look at this one here. Look at how big that flower is. That's gonna make a big old boy. Again, all different varieties. Red Brandy, what's this one? Carolina Gold, Prairie Fire Plum, Soldaki, White Snowball, Powers Yellow Sauce, Nature's Riddle. This is Sun Sugar Hybrid, which I mean, I thought it was dead, but it's doing great now, so I'm excited about that one. And then look at this. This is the potato patch, and it is starting to flower. I've been hilling it up and hilling it up, and it's doing so great. I cannot wait to dig into this and see what's underneath this thing. But once you see flowers, usually once the flowers die back, it can be, I think it's just a couple of weeks after that, and you can start harvesting your potatoes. But not all of them are flowering. Like just this little bit is flowering. Well, they're all little, some of them. These are flowering. So it won't be long, guys, till. And I'm going to record it. And then here, I'm super excited about this. This is the first time I've grown an apple gourd. Because I would like to make some birdhouses with the gourds. Planted um, some flowers here. I believe this is some sort of Rudbeckia, and I just planted it a couple days ago, so they're kind of looking a little rough. This is the loofah gourd, and it is starting to climb. Oh, I'm sorry about the lighting, guys. I should have done this a little earlier, but two loofah gourds on this. That might be too much, but we'll find out. It's the first time I've grown it. I had a bunch of other gourds I was trying to grow from seed, but if gourd seeds don't last very long, and it doesn't look like any of them are doing anything, but I'll put them down here just in case it's just taking them forever to germinate. If they do germinate, I'll pop them in the ground. And so right here in this little strip, I planted mammoth basil, and then in this little strip right here, I planted some purple ruffles basil, and you can see they're all starting to germinate. I have a couple more tomato plants. Um, this is a currant. What is this one? Oh, geranium kiss. It's another like micro tomato plant. And right here is golden nugget watermelon. So I'm gonna grow these up the trellis and they're getting going. And then I'm excited about this, Kajari melon. So I've tried for three years. Again, it's like the brown cherries. I keep trying and I keep failing. This year I planted a ton of seeds all along this trellis in the hopes that I'll be successful. And these were the first two I planted and then I went and I planted some more. Fingers crossed. I get a Kajori melon. So this side right here, it's not done yet. We're still building the beds down this side of the hill. I think there'll be like a bed here and a bed here and then the lower bed. So at this point, I can't plant anything in the ground here because it's all just shale, you can see. We had all this dirt brought in and it was basically a bunch of shale because my yard up back was probably about half the size it is now. We had a bunch of dirt brought in to try to extend our yard. And then after doing that, I decided I wanted a garden and I figured I had this hill. And my husband is very handy and he started building me beds. And so we still have a couple of beds we've got to build. 
down here. Wood prices have been ridiculous, so I've just been holding off, but the wood prices are coming down, so I think we might get started in the next few weeks working on another bed. But I would like this, you know, whole hill to be complete eventually. Got my wind chime up here, pest deterrent. All right, so now looking down, this is the middle row, the bottom of here. This is my pepper bed. I've got all kinds of different peppers. And these are, this is my sweet pepper bed. But there's all different kinds there and they're starting to flower. See all the little flowers on there? So that's exciting. I've also got at the very end of this bed, for the first time I'm growing, this is the crimson spineless okra. And then I believe these three are the hill country okra. And I've got some, I believe these are Shasta daisies right there. And then I planted in the corner of this bed a nasturtium. And whatever I planted here is not germinating. So I don't know, Minnesota midget melon. Give it another couple more days and then I will replant with something else. Some flowers. So I've got flowers dotted out, dotted kind of everywhere in between to try to bring in pollinators. Here I have the Benny Kadima melon. I've only got a couple. There's one there and then one there. So hopefully they do okay. Then I have this is going to be my bean trellis. This is the Thai purple potted yard long bean. And then another Cosmo. And on this side, I have Chinese red noodle bean and then the green noodle bean. So it's called asparagus. So this is going to be just lovely once it's all filled out. Moving right along, more flowers. And then I have the the Sharon, Sharon Taze, Sharon Taze melon. So a bunch of them are popping up. Yep, 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 yep. Hopefully we get some in there, like another little melon. And then what is on here? So those are my long beans. That's my long bean trellis. This is my smaller bean trellis. So I have here scarlet runner bean and on the other side i have the monte gusto monte gusto bean and did i show you everything no nope, i did not so on this side of this trellis so for reference there's the sweet potato bed so this is the these are the first beds that we built. And at the bottom of that trellis, I have, again, I must've planted some beans and forgot about them. So those are some bean plants. We'll figure out what those are when they have beans on them. But this is the Rampicante squash, yeah. And I grew this one year before and it's really pretty. Then I planted some, I don't know if you can see them. These are black snapdragons how dark the foliage is. So I've dotted these all around my property because I love snapdragons. And then I showed you this. This is the cucumber trellis. Okay, well, look at those tomato plants. Just tomato plants everywhere. Oh, I didn't show you the top bed. Top bed right there. Guess what's in it? More tomatoes. <laughs> Cannot help myself. Let's go up there and see what we got up there. There's some more sweet peppers. So I've got sweet peppers all along the back there. And then more tomatoes. So this one right here I'm super excited about. This one I was really worried about. I thought it was gonna die, it looked dead. 
but it bounced back. Just get your, if your plants look dead, get them in the ground, give them a chance. They'll surprise you. Black strawberry. This is the black strawberry. So a bunch of different tomato plants, tomato plants, tomato plants. Had a pepper plant that didn't make it. Got Corbachi Sweet, Tangerine Dream. And then I'm in the process right now of mulching between the beds. There's more blueberry plants right there. And then I've got raspberry plants all around the backside of my hammock pergola. And then here's a new bed my husband built for me. And then right above that, a very new bed that I just filled yesterday. So there's nothing planted in that. But I have some parsley, a nasturtium, and then this is a sunflower that I planted. I can't remember the variety. And then here are cucumbers again. Uh, be it alpha cucumber. This is the first year I've grown these and I hear that they are delicious. So I'm excited about those. And I have some kales planted right here just because I needed more space from a bed over there. So I took them from that bed. So I took them from that bed and I put them here. I don't know how well they'll do. Then these are my husband's cantaloupes. He got some cantaloupes from a nursery. I'm hoping they'll do okay up here. Another sunflower and some lemon basil there. And my honeysuckle is blooming. Isn't it gorgeous? And you can see my raspberry plants are just taking over. I need to move some of these. They're all in my walkway around my hammock pergola. But look at that, all the way up. And I'm hoping that it grows. Ooh, look, these blueberries look like they're getting further along. But it's starting to come across the top. So I'm just hoping that this thing just fills out beautifully. I don't know what to plant in this bed. Not tomatoes. I think I have enough tomatoes. Don't you guys think? <laughs> but I'll figure it out. You can see I got this little area mulched between here. So between this bed, this will be the walkway and I'm working on mulching right there. And then there's the steps down the hill working on redoing some of the fire pit because the wood is old, getting kind of not sturdy. Let me show you my, my dahlias. Oh, well, these are starting to die a little bit, but they're still beautiful. Even as they're, here's a new one. Here's a new one. Aren't they beautiful? Oh my gosh. Can't wait to see what the other ones do. There's some more right there. These are my honeyberry bushes. Planted some more flowers there. And then let me show you what happened here. So I was actually able to fix this. This dahlia broke in two different spots. And so I mended it by just putting the two pieces back together. I mean, it wasn't completely broken off, but it was cracked like a lot. And so I just kind of taped it back together and it looks like it's making it as well as it just started to form new growth from the bottom of it. I thought it was a goner, but I was wrong. And then this is my kiwi, kiwi plant that I'm hoping that will eventually, it's not getting much bigger. I don't know whether they take a while to grow or what, but it's gonna grab a hold of this trellis here and climb up and over the swing set. And these are the dahlias that I planted from seed. 
These are the cactus dahlias. So I've got three of those. They're doing well. And then to end this video, because it's probably going to be ridiculously long, I need to weed this bed. It's crazy. Oh, and I think I showed you in my last May garden tour, I trimmed back these butterfly bushes. Like, they were massive. They were huge. It was like up to there. And I trimmed it back. And I trimmed it back a lot. And I thought I'd killed it because I didn't see any growth except for the very bottom. And so my husband, you can see some of the trunk of it here. I had my husband cut off all the dead wood. And now look at this thing. So resilient. Wonderful for the uh, hummingbirds. So I love having butterfly bushes. Hummingbirds love it. And they're dotted everywhere. There's one. There's a bunch. This particular variety is invasive. I pull these things out from everywhere. And it's like a light purple. I got some foamy bells, I believe they're called. But aren't they lovely? Got my little fairy garden here. Another thing that propagates itself are lupines. They're everywhere. I didn't plant any of these. <laughs> I planted that one. Got my little, my favorite little seating area to watch all the birds right here. My egg chairs I got for an excellent deal probably about six years ago. So these chairs are old and they are still in great shape. We'll end the video by showing you some of these beautiful chickens. Oh, the Swiss, I planted some stuff all around the outside of the chicken coop too. Some kale, some Swiss chard, some sunflowers. Hi girls! I have better lighting over on this side to say hello to them. Look at them. And they'll all come running. Where's my snacks? Where's my <laughs> snacks? <laughs> I know. I will bring you something. I'll go get you some kale. Pretty girls. Yeah. Yeah. You're beautiful. I love you. Say bye-bye. Till the next one.